Right. So there's, I think, several teams that are going to have strong interest in DiVincenzo once we get to that free agency period. Uh, three that I had heard about, one was Minnesota, which should have access to that exception that we're talking about the Knicks having access to as well. Another is Chicago, which also should have access to that exception. Then the third is Detroit, which that's interesting because they have significant cap space. So if they wanted to, they could offer DiVincenzo a contract north of where that exception starts, which is around $12.4 million, I believe. So I think there's going to be competition for DiVincenzo, but I do think, again, the money's equal. I would think that he chooses New York because of those organic ties, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, his college teammates at Villanova. And you guys talk about shooting. This surprised me. Uh, DiVincenzo ranked third in three-point field goal percentage on the Warriors last season behind Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. So he knocked the three ball down at a very good rate. And that's not something that you saw from him a ton previously in his career, but maybe he comes here and he knocks down shots for this team and he helps spread the floor. Yeah, Dante DiVincenzo, 39.7% from three in the regular season for the Warriors. Um, CP, I want to come to you. Do DiVincenzo or Bruce Brown have a good next fit in your mind? Yeah, I would like both those players on the Knicks. When you look at DiVincenzo, as you guys said, close to 40% from three. Another great rebounding guard next to Josh Hart. Dante DiVincenzo near the top of the league in offensive rebounding percentage. Uh, defensively led the league of close to, in, I think, 90th percentile in steal percentage as well. So a guy that's going to get after it on the perimeter gives you another guard that can get out. Get out get out and transition for you. So DiVincenzo can certainly help. And Bruce Brown, you got to like his his two-way ability, his ability to get to the rim and finish at the rim. Another area of need for the Knicks. Guys that can get you easier buckets, high percentage buckets. A guy like a Bruce Brown can do that for you. With Bruce Brown, I like his ability to cut off ball. One of the better off ball movers at the guard position and off ball screeners at the guard position in the league. And now that would be up to Tom Thibodeau to – emphasize more off ball movement in his offense. That's another story for another day, but those yeah. two guys can certainly help. And even though, you know, a lot of fans will question, well, where are they going to play, where the minutes going to come from the way I look at a potential acquisition of Dante DiVincenzo, or Bruce Brown is if the Knicks are working with that mid level around 12 million, and you look at the guys who they realistically have a shot at, these two would probably be, the best player available if you're going to use kind of like a draft concept. So for me, you go, you go get those guys. Obviously they can help this team and you kind of worry about it later, how you're going to make it work with the minutes, but they'll give you some flexibility to make trades down the road, whether it's an existing player on your roster or one of these two guys to, to go upgrade the team um, even more. Yeah. Either of them could be reliable depth options for the Knicks. Okay. Ian, here's a question for you. A report came out earlier from the athletic about the Lakers' interest in Bruce Brown Jr. for the mid-level exception, what's the Knicks' current interest level in Bruce Brown? Yeah, I know that there are people over there who think very highly of Bruce Brown. Obviously, played a key role for the Denver Nuggets in winning a title. I would assume that he would get more than the mid-level exception. But, you know, listen, I think that there are he, he played in this city with Brooklyn, and, and there are certainly I think people on the coaching staff that like Bruce Brown a lot. So you're going to see some overlap between teams interested in Bruce Brown and teams in, interested in Dante DiVincenzo. I think they have a similar market uh, where maybe Brown goes first, DiVincenzo goes second. But those are the two top wings in that mid-level exception area that you're looking at. And I think that you know, if things fell apart with DiVincenzo, if it didn't work out, I think the Knicks would be aggressive on Bruce Brown. I agree with you. You know, when you talk about Bruce Brown, you talk about maximizing your value at the perfect time, right? Winning a championship, playing a key role as, you know, a support player for the Nuggets going into free agency like this. That's great. I think Ian hit it on the head when he talked about the experience of playing in this city, you know, albeit it was in Brooklyn. So he'd be familiar with that. But both of these guys, Brown and DiVincenzo, they're winners. And you can't have enough winners be part of your program. Yeah. You know, that was one of the things. Forget about the fact that Jalen Brunson was, you know, performed above and beyond last year. But everything people said about Brunson was the fact that this guy won in college. Well, DiVincenzo won in college. DiVincenzo won with the Milwaukee Bucks. Right. I know the Warriors didn't win last year. But still, you're part of that Warriors culture, albeit for a brief time, whatever it was. I mean, that has to sort of rub off on you a little bit. So 
either one of these players, if they were to join this franchise, you're bringing winners, guys who help you get to that next level in your program. I don't think that's ever a bad thing.